Bring life to your home with this enchanting 4x4x4 LED cube. This cube can be programmed to display many different types of 3D LED transitions. This customizable PCB LED cube is super easy to make and fun to have at your home. Go ahead and create a forest of these cubes using various color LEDs to enhance the beauty of your Christmas tree this Christmas. This cube has 64 blue LEDs organized in 4 layers. These LEDs are wired up to Arduino Nano. Each LED can be addressed individually using Arduino IDE, enabling it to display amazing 3D transitions. There are hundreds of tutorials of this cube made using exposed metal wires and by using crazy soldering techniques, which just gives me shivers. In this tutorial, I'll show you guys how to make this super simple 4x4x4 PCB LED cube without overcomplicating anything. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay specializes in manufacturing of very high quality, low volume colored PCBs at a very budgetary price. In addition to standard PCBs, you can also order advanced PCBs, aluminum PCBs, rigid flex PCBs. They also provide PCB assembly and other related services which can meet your need to the greatest extent. For this project we need 64 blue colored round LEDs, 4 blue colored flat LEDs, 400 ohm resistors, 8 4GX9 pan head screws, 1 220 volt to 5 volt step down converter, an AC power cord, 1 Arduino Nano, a 3D printer, acrylic colors, custom built PCBs and 20 optional thick copper wires. All the project related resources can be downloaded from my GitHub repository. Before we start assembling our LED cube, it is a very good idea to test these LEDs since few of the LEDs will remain absolutely inside the cube, so accessing them after the assembly will become an absolute nightmare. Hence, a simple mistake can bring a lot of grief. Using a coin cell, I tested all the 64 main LEDs and the 4 square LEDs. So, I designed two types of PCBs for this project. One for the base and the other one that will be installed four times to create the top four layers of the cube. Both PCBs have top and bottom written on them. The top section faces up and the bottom section faces down. While assembling the cube, I will first solder the 16 copper wires to the top section of the base plate. Then, I will solder the remaining four wires to the board. Each of these wires will connect to only one layer. Hence, all these wires are of different sizes. The first one from right connects to layer 1, next one to layer 2 and so on. Once all the wires are soldered to the top section of the base plate, I will one by one slide the LED meshes over these wires and solder them accordingly to form the top 4 layers. So this is what came in the mail bag. Thanks to PCBWay, the boards are very well fabricated and they look absolutely amazing. The black color solder mask is adding to the beauty of the boards. As discussed earlier, we need four of the LED mesh boards and one board for the base. One by one, I added all the LEDs to the board. While soldering the LEDs, please make sure that they are all added to the top side of the board. Once all LEDs were in, I went ahead and soldered them to the board. After sorting out the top layer, it was time for me to set up the bottom bit. I started the setup by soldering the 400 ohm resistors to the board. Then I soldered the Arduino Nano to the board. Instead of soldering the Arduino Nano directly to the board, I used female pin headers to house the Arduino Nano. Please make sure all these components are soldered to the bottom side of the plate. After that, I one by one soldered all the copper wires to the base plate. While soldering the wires, please make sure you solder them to the top side of the board. After soldering the wires to the base plate, slide the first LED mesh and solder all the wires to it. Then slide the second one and so on. I left a 1.7 cm gap between each layer and 1.2 cm gap between the first layer and the base plate. In this setup, the four wires that we saw earlier that connects to individual layers are all soldered to the middle rail. However, in the final version, I moved them to the outer rail to make the soldering process easy. I found this sketch online and then I edited it to work with my LED cube. You can download the code from my GitHub repository. The code is exactly same as any other 4x4x4 cube code with some additional transitions that I added. 
I also found that the Arduino Nano freezes after a while. So to keep the process going without any interruptions, I added a function to reboot the board after it completes one set of transition. Using Microsoft 3D Builder, I designed the base of the cube. The on-screen 3D model is actually upside down. On one of the sides, I left a hole for inserting the power cord. These grooves are for the four flathead LEDs. The lid sits on the top of the base and is screwed to the base using the 4GX9 panhead screws. Once the 3D models were sorted, it was time for me to fire up my 3D printing oven and start printing these 3D models. As we all know, 3D printing is the process that uses computer-aided design or CAD to create objects layer by layer. 3D printing is not a new technology. It's been there since 1980s when Charles W. Hull invented the process and created the first 3D printed part. Since then, the field of 3D printing has grown exponentially and holds countless possibilities. The 3D printing process fascinates me a lot and I sometimes love to sit near my 3D printer and watch these layers getting printed. After extracting all the 3D printed bits, I sanded them to give them a nice and smooth texture. Using acrylic colors, I painted the body of the 3D printed base. Now the final bits. I soldered the base plate and the four flathead LEDs to the 220V to 5V step down converter. Then I pushed all the flathead LEDs through the grooves that I created in the 3D printed base. Then using the 4GX9 panhead screws, I screwed the 3D printed base to the base plate. I also created an acrylic box for the cube which will keep the cube dust free. Next. I soldered the AC power cord to the step down converter and hot glued it to one side of the 3D printed base. To conclude the assembly, I screwed the cover to the base. That's it. All done. So this is how my final setup looks like. Do comment and let me know if there are any scopes of improvement. Thanks again for watching this video, I hope it helps you. If you want to support me, you can subscribe to my channel and watch my other videos. Thanks. See you again in my next video. Bye now.